Welcome to Unit 2 of our Graduate Music History Survey. In this unit, we turn our attention to the classical era of music history, roughly 1750 to 1825. Although brief, this period had an enormous impact on musical style and culture well into the 19th century and beyond. This week, we will focus on the historical and cultural background to the period, seeking to shed light on the following questions. Why was Vienna such an important site of musical activity during these years? What was happening in the political realm during this time? What new developments were there in related fields, such as visual art, architecture, and literature? And what developments took place in the music industry? That is, where, how, and by whom music was produced, promoted, and consumed. We will then turn our attention to Mozart's String Quartet K387, composed in Vienna in 1782. We'll first discuss the conditions under which it was composed and published, and then listen to and answer discussion questions about the piece itself. Next week, we will continue to discuss the classical era by focusing on Beethoven's Symphony No. 5 um, and a song and string quartet by Schubert, Death and the Maiden. Let us begin by painting a picture in broad strokes of the political and intellectual climate of the time. As the classical period begins around 1750, we are in the age of the Enlightenment, with its emphasis on individual rights, equality rather than hierarchy, human reason as the source of authority, and the collection and dissemination of human knowledge. This period saw an increase in literacy and the publication of massive encyclopedias intended to encompass all human knowledge. The French Encyclopédie, published between 1751 and 1785, was one of the most influential publications of the period, and its English-language counterpart, the Encyclopedia Britannica, published between 1768 and 71, is likely still familiar to English speakers today. Foundational works of politics, economics, philosophy, religion, and literature were published by authors such as Voltaire, Rousseau, Montesquieu, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, and Friedrich Schiller. The last two were particularly important for their influence on musicians. A number of composers set Goethe's poems to music, including Mozart, Beethoven, Schubert, Schumann, Brahms, Wagner, and others. Schubert set several of Schiller's poems as leader, and Beethoven used his Andi Freude in the finale of his Ninth Symphony. Enlightenment thinkers advocated for religious tolerance and sought to limit the power of organized religion, with the more radical among them arguing in favor of the separation between church and state. Some explored new approaches to religion, including deism and atheism. Democratic values were introduced by political thinkers, who advocated for representative government and helped usher in the age of liberal democracies a direct challenge to the hereditary monarchies that had ruled Europe for centuries. The clash of these Enlightenment ideals with entrenched power structures led to political upheaval that was felt throughout Europe and the New World. The American Revolution was quickly followed by the French Revolution. Both were rejections of monarchy in favor of republics, both were founded on liberal ideals such as universal human rights and the equality of man. The city of Vienna was not immune to this upheaval, as Napoleon's army marched through and occupied the city more than once between 1805 and 1815. Why are we focused on Vienna today? To begin with, it was the home of many of the most significant composers of the classical style. Haydn, Mozart, Beethoven, and Schubert all spent at least part of their careers in the city. Vienna at this time was part of a tightly controlled authoritarian state, the capital of the far-reaching and diverse Austrian Empire. However, during this classical period, we see a rising push toward equality rather than the rigid social hierarchy that had characterized Austrian and indeed European society in the past. As the capital of the Austrian Empire, it was something of a crossroads, an increasingly important center for finance, bureaucracy, and trade, especially starting in the 1780s. 
It was the home of the emperor's court, as well as numerous palaces of the noble class, a major source of patronage for musicians and composers. At the beginning of the period under discussion today, the city's society was highly structured, perhaps even repressive, with censorship and secret police a fact of life. However, this period saw the reign of Emperor Joseph II as Holy Roman Emperor, one of the leaders from this period who are today known as enlightened despots. Named Holy Roman Emperor in 1765, it wasn't until his mother's death in 1780 that Joseph acquired true power to shape the course of the empire. Joseph was a zealous reformer, and his attempts to introduce Enlightenment ideals such as religious and political tolerance to his far-flung empire were met with fierce backlash. He brought the church under imperial control, seeking to lessen its power by secularizing church lands and instituting limited freedom of worship. He abolished serfdom and harsh punishments, such as the death penalty. He greatly limited censorship of the press and theater, temporarily allowing for debate on social issues. At the same time, he emphasized a centralized, uniform government throughout the diverse empire. For example, he decreed German the official language of business and bureaucracy throughout. Many of his reforms were short-lived, overturned after his untimely death in 1790. As the 18th century draws to a close and the, the 19th century dawns, we see other trends at work as well. Great economic growth in Vienna led to the, the growth of the middle class and institutions to support it. This, in turn, contributed to the increased availability of public concerts and increased publication of scores for at-home music making. Foreign artists, musicians, and artisans flocked to the city near the end of the 18th century and into the 19th. The Industrial Revolution, circa 1760 to 1820, aided in these trends as well, as instrument production provided amateur musicians the tools required for music making to become a common middle-class pastime. During this period, we see something of a rejection of the artistic trends of the previous Baroque period in favor of a return to so-called classical styles. As we discussed in Unit 1, visual art and architecture can at times provide an analog to stylistic trends in music. So, for example, we can look at the Karlskirche, the Church of St. Charles of Borromeo in Vienna, as a reminder of Baroque art and architecture. Here we see the ornate columns and decorated dome of the exterior of the church, alongside an image of its high altar. The latter especially gives a sense of the fluidity of Baroque art, the high degree of ornamentation, the movement and drama inherent in the style. By contrast, let us look at two exteriors of buildings in the later neoclassical style, intended as a return to the ideals of the ancients. On the right, the Palais Razumovsky, completed in 1807 for the, for the dedicatee of Beethoven's Opus 59. Count Razumovsky himself was an amateur violinist. On the left, a somewhat later building, Vienna's Music Verein, built in the same neoclassical style. Here we see formal balance and symmetry, much more restrained decoration, and a shift from exuberant dramatic curves and flourishes towards straight lines and simplicity. An image from the interior of the French Chateau de Malmaison, dating from around 1800, makes the debt to the ancient world abundantly clear. These trends in visual art and architecture will have analogs in the prevailing musical style of the period, as we will discuss in Module 3. Finally, the classical era also witnessed a reaction against many of the Enlightenment ideals mentioned here, as a new intellectual movement, Romanticism, began to emerge. This included a renewed interest in religion and a turn back toward the stability offered by monarchical rule. The Congress of Vienna in 1815 is an example of this shift. Coming at the end of nearly 25 years of upheaval, the Congress sought to iron out the terms of peace after the Napoleonic Wars. And it was more interested in stability, prosperity, and maintaining the status quo 
than in revolutionary ideologies. But Congress lent even more prestige to the city of Vienna and contributed to the increasing numbers of social events in the city, including concerts. This general shift helped usher in the Biedermeier period from about 1815 to 1848, when revolution again gripped Europe. During this time, artists often focused on the domestic, the intimate, and the non-political, as we'll discuss in a bit more detail next week. This turbulent time in Vienna was the backdrop for the careers of the three composers whose works we will discuss this week and next. Mozart, who made a largely independent living in Vienna, Beethoven, who captured the revolutionary spirit of the time in some of his works, including the Third Symphony, and Schubert, who flourished in the private, intimate salons of the Biedermeier period.